Okay, I just want to go over a little bit of hyperbolic functions, and hopefully this will be um, fairly straightforward. So if you didn't watch the um, introductory video, I'll post that also um, about hyperbolic functions, about how they're connected to um, just our standard trig functions. But so there are six hyperbolic trig functions um, that are um, named similarly to the standard trig functions, but are defined in different ways. So in this first box, you'll see just the actual definitions <clears throat> and how we compute these hyperbolic trig functions. So you'll see right in here, sine h of x, or a hyperbolic sine, is e to the x minus e to the minus x over 2. Um, this is also, you can write as just 1 half e to the x minus 1 half e to the minus x. Either way, um, <clears throat> split it into two fractions if you want. Same with. Um, hyperbolic cosine. Um, this can be written as one half e to the x plus one half e to the minus x, right? And then the other trig function, trig functions defined in relation to these two major ones. Um, and then you also see that the derivatives of these functions, hyperbolic sine, the derivative is hyperbolic cosine, the derivative of cosine h is sine, hyperbolic sine, and then the derivative of um, hyperbolic tan is still hyperbolic secant squared. Um, so there's a lot of similarities here. You'll see differences here um, for these minus signs. Um, I don't want you to worry about having to memorize any of these. Um, if they're on the exam, if I ask you a couple basic questions, I'll give you um, <clears throat> these basic formulas, including these up here in the definitions and the derivatives. So please don't worry about um, needing to add any of those to your um, memorization of derivatives. And then just like with um, trig, we have identities. So you might remember trig identities. Are things like the Pythagorean identity, cosine squared plus sine squared x is one, things like this. They're just um, algebraic, um, truths or equalities that we use to manipulate algebraic expre expressions. So these are not derivatives, They're, they are just identities. So you have something like this, sine h of negative x is equal to negative sine h of x, right? Um, and that's just an identity that this function, hyperbolic sine, is an odd function, meaning symmetric about the origin. Over here, you have a similar identity for um, hyperbolic cosine, except this identity shows that it's an even function, symmetric about the y-axis. <clears throat> and then here you have a similar to the Pythagorean identity for hyperbolic um, cosine. And then here are the additive identities, there are similar ones to these for um, trig as well, right? Okay. So this is all sort of information that I want you to just look over, but then really what I want you to do is I just put together um, a few problems to just use this information and um, maybe like I'll show you a couple, like, let's say we'll do this one, find sine h of zero. So what I would really do is come back up here 
And remember the definition of hyperbolic sine. So I have e to the x minus e to the minus x over 2. And then I want to plug in 0. Why did I write minus 0? <clears throat> And here we have 1 minus 1 over 2 is equal to 0 over 2. That's just 0, right? So hyperbolic sine at 0 is 0. And you would do the same for these other ones. Is that OK? So you'll just go back to fundamental de definitions or to things that you already know. So like when you're calculating here, tan h of 0, you might just use these two values, sine h of 0 and cosine h of 0, that you already established. And otherwise, you can go back to kind of these fundamental e to the x definitions to figure things out. OK. Um, we also can, in some ways, uh, hop back and forth between an e to the x formulation and the sine h sort of um, shorthand notations. Um, so here it says write 8 sine h of x plus 5 cosine h of x in terms of e to the x and e to the minus x. So again, I'm going to come back up to these formulations, right? And I have sine h of x is um, e to the x minus e to the minus x, and then this one is plus all, both over 2. So I'm just going to write that out. So I have 8, and then I'm going to put in this e to the x minus e to the minus x over 2 plus 5 e to the x plus e to the minus x over 2. And then I'm just going to simplify all of these three here. I want you to simplify as much as possible. So for sure, 8 over 2 is 4. So I'll get 4e to the x minus 4e to the minus x plus 5 halves e to the x plus 5 halves halves e to the minus x. Now I have like terms here and here, and then these two. So I'll just add the or subtract the coefficients. So 4 plus 5 halves should be 13 halves. Or maybe I'll just go, like in my head, I'm just thinking of these as 8 halves that I originally had. So I have 13 halves e to the x. And then here I have 5 halves minus 8 halves, so that would be minus 3 halves e to the minus x. And again, I could write this over a common denominator, 13 e to the x minus 3 e to the minus x all over 2. OK, check my work. I have a little brain fog, so um, just check. And um, this should be good. But do simplify these for 2, 3, 4, and 5. For prove the identity, again, most of these are going back to these fundamental definitions. So right here, I'm going to find I need to prove sine h of negative x is equal to negative sine h of x. And what I'm going to do for that is I'm going to start with the left side. <coughs> and I'm going to go back to the fundamental definition. This is E. Maybe I'm going to write this in a couple ways. Give me one second. <clears throat> so I'm going to start with that I know 
sine h of x is e to the x minus e to the minus x over 2. So now that means that when I plug in negative x, and this is where I'm going to start the proof, so this is what I know, then I'm just going to plug negative x in. I get e to the minus x minus e to the x over 2. <coughs> Right, and then this function right here, if I factor out a negative, on top I'll get a negative e to the minus x plus e to the x all over two. And that's really, let's see, oh, here we go, negative e to the x. I'm going to switch the forms up here. And you'll see here now, this is the beginning of sine hx, like this. Um, the other way to do that is just to find both of these separately and then compare them, make sure that they're the same, um, either, the, either of those. So for all of these, again, <clears throat> you're going back to these fundamental definitions and simplifying them, um, working with exponential, these um, natural exponential functions. Okay, same with prove the derivative formulas, like for sine h of x is b, so it, that's the same as the derivative of this e to the x minus e to the minus x over 2. And then again, you might just think about these. You don't need the quotient rule for these. You might think about these as this. This is what, like, this other formulation is helpful. Take the derivative and then reconvert back into hyperbolic functions, right? Remembering that the derivative of e to the u. So you'll kind of continue that um, work. And then finally here, these are just applications of the derivative formulas that you have up at the top. So for cosine h of the derivative of hyperbolic cosine, I'm going to come up here. I'm going to like look up the fact that it's sine h of x. And then I'm going to use, because this input to cosine h of x is more complex. I'm going to use the chain rule. <clears throat> so f prime of x should be sine h 3x times the derivative of the inside 3. And I'm just going to apply that, those, you know, sort of shortcut formulas. Does that make sense? So again, a lot of this is about seeing structure. Here, there's a um, product rule. Here, this is chain rule. This, again, this is the same thing as sine h of x squared. So you need to use the chain rule here. This is a chain rule. This is ln inside sine h. And this, again, is a product rule. So just be careful with these, apply these formulas, um, and then I'll, I'll try to create a space hog grade scope for you to um, turn in uh, what you have done. Um, so we'll just do these seven problems as the homework for this week for these hyperbolic functions. It will be um, enough practice. And like I said, if you feel familiar kind of manipulating these 
on the exam, you would be given um, at, at minimum these top two um, boxes and maybe, you know, like we, part of the homework was to ask you to show this. So that's a potential um, problem. Um, I mean, like for the exam, a potential problem on the exam. Okay, please let me know if you have questions. Um, hopefully this will be sort of a, a low-key day of applying these new formulas.